All right, so this is a suggestion via a channel member. The name of the video is, uh, NASA chief gives serious warning about an asteroid hitting Earth. Let's go ahead and jump into it, guys. Let's see where this takes us. This episode was made possible by Brilliant. Throughout history, the thought of a massive space rock hurtling into Earth has got quite a lot of people nervous. It's understandable that people are naturally afraid of asteroids. I mean, if yeah. one were to really make contact with our planet, it could create massive tidal waves, a brand new ice age, and an explosion that is unparalleled in the course of human history. I mean, like, listen, if it's large enough, then yeah. Even though the movies like to show asteroids creating havoc for humans, the idea is not just some work of fiction by movie studios. The truth is that asteroids do pose a real, credible threat to all of humanity. And to make things even worse, NASA has already detected massive asteroids that are on a straight path for Earth. A couple of them. This is where NASA's DART mission enters the picture. The first planetary defense project to test a method of deflecting an asteroid on course with our home planet. So what does DART do? When will it be up and running? And most importantly, how will it save us from the biggest threat to humanity? Okay, guys, so I definitely know that we have a couple of threats coming, um, asteroid-related, let's say, within the next uh, what, five years or so. So I definitely do hope that this program does uh, you know, get up and running and fast enough uh, so we can kind of divert some of the big ones. Maybe I think uh, Apophis, maybe? All right, let's jump into it, guys. October 22nd, 2021. This was the day an enormous asteroid named 2021 SM3 came flying by Earth at breakneck speeds. With a diameter of around 525 feet, this space object is even bigger than the Great Pyramid of Giza in Egypt. Perhaps the most frightening part about this experience was that scientists were only able to detect the object one month in advance to its nearby passing meaning that if its trajectory was just slightly changed towards Earth, we would have had no way of stopping its destruction. I mean, guys, generally they don't break apart like in this, like the exosphere, right? I mean, they generally start breaking apart in the mesosphere. This is just one of the many close calls that Earth has each year with asteroids. So it's no wonder why NASA has made it a priority to create a reliable system to prevent a horrific collision. Formerly titled the Double Asteroid Redirection Test, NASA's DART probe launched only two months after this close call while riding atop a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. The mission will all come to a head later next year. That's when the 1,210-pound spacecraft will collide with a minor asteroid dubbed Dimorphos at a speed of roughly 4 miles per second. This will happen in late September or early October 2022 and will hopefully modify the space rock's orbit around its bigger partner, Is this Dimos. Is video? After the collision, astronomers down on Earth will measure the difference to see how efficient this kinetic impact approach of asteroid deflection is. If the results are substantial, this might become the tactic mankind may use <laughs> in the- Guys, I just found something absolutely amazing I've never seen in my entire life. Guys, if you are on a PC or, or anything, right? Google Dart NASA. And it's like a gigantic animation that pops up. It's actually pretty cool. Future, if a rock you lands seen up it. Earth in its sights. Ideally, the impact should shorten Dimorphos's orbit by several minutes, although the exact amount is subject to change. DART will prove to NASA that a spacecraft can navigate itself to a target asteroid and collide with it on its own. Now, how does DART work and what sort of next-gen technology has NASA equipped it with? The DART spacecraft is tiny compared to others in NASA's arsenal. The spacecraft's core is a box that is just a meter wide on all sides, with two roll-out solar arrays that give it a span of roughly 40 feet. DART's electronic propulsion technology uses a constant flow of charged ions to deliver a mild push. Okay. To get going, the spaceship will circle around Earth many times using its electronic engine to gradually build the necessary speed to break out from orbit. It will then start the long journey to Didymos, potentially passing another asteroid named 2001 CB21 along the way. 
Yeah, guys, I'm not sure of the code names for them. I think I know the names. Um, but here's the thing. This program, in fact, did work here, apparently. Um, yeah, I'm looking at the information here. This is, yes, uh, uh, see, the DART mission was successful. The spaceship successfully impacted the asteroid uh, Dimorphos, uh, which resulted in a significant alteration of its orbit. So apparently we do have this. Um, for some reason, I, I never even did any type of research on this program because it definitely sounds like something I would probably be excessively interested in. DART actually has only one piece of science equipment named Draco a high-resolution camera that also serves as a navigation system. I would expect it's that. It's inspired by a camera on NASA's New Horizons mission, which famously flew past Pluto years ago. DART will launch an Italian space agency built CubeSat to witness the impact five days before it arrives. The primary spacecraft will be too far away from Earth for flight controllers to manage in real time, so four hours before impact, it will convert to an autonomous navigation mode. Draco's images will aid the spacecraft's computer in distinguishing between Didymos and Dimorphos, allowing it to navigate toward the latter. Hey guys, we should have definitely went after the big one. Using a very cutting edge <laughs> guidance, case. navigation and control system, along with algorithms called Small Body Maneuvering Autonomous Real-Time Navigation, or smart map, the dart craft will be able to tell the difference between the two asteroids, allowing it to zero in on its final destination. All of this planning and projecting and navigating will occur within just one hour of impact. The target asteroid is about 6.8 million miles from Earth, far from the reach of our scientists on the ground. That means that all of this will truly be autonomous. After all that preparation, it'll be over in seconds, Darts will collide with Dimorphos, changing the orbital period of Dimorphos around Didymos from 11.9 to 11.8 hours, <laughs> a difference of only 4.2 minutes. Hey, listen, that's enough. Dimorphos will move closer to Didymos as a result of this. All in all, the project will quickly send back the results that will be analyzed again and again by the brilliant minds at NASA. The best case scenario will give the agency a strong, reliable way to fight off an asteroid hurtling towards Earth. The worst case scenario will send them back to the drawing board yet again. Astronomers will be able to compare data from Earth-based telescopes before and after DART's kinetic impact to see how much Dimorphos' orbital period altered. This is the critical metric that will inform NASA how the asteroid reacted to DART's deflection operations. The and guys, think about this here. Like, if we were to actually uh, get all the data we actually need to know how much it actually takes to move that one singular one, right, just a good enough distance for it to miss Earth, Guys, I th yeah, yeah, this program would absolutely be game changing in terms of like stopping any type of ELE or like a um, an extinction level event. You get what I mean here, guys? This would absolutely be game changing here. European Space Agency's HERA mission will form a follow up analysis of Didymos and Dimorphos a few years after the impact, providing more data and results for scientists to work through. The idea guys, it of just needs to move a little. Isn't a new one, but it's one that NASA has been looking to investigate for a long time. They just needed to find the right asteroid system to send the craft to. These asteroids have a certain speed that is really attractive to NASA, especially for a test like this. Because Dimorphos orbits Didymos at a much slower speed than other asteroids, the results of the DART experiment can be easily measured. Dimorphos was chosen for this trip because its size is comparable to asteroids that potentially that threaten us. Earth. Yet the twin asteroid system does not represent a direct threat to Earth itself. Okay, okay, okay. So, so that's moderately troubling, right? Because think about the amount of money that was spent for this here. I understand the concept of testing, et cetera, et cetera. But like, guys, we should have definitely went for one, um, you know, maybe quadrupled or 10x the yield, let's say, right? Well, we should have definitely done one of them that actually we could monitor, okay? Um, and also that was a threat to us for the sole purpose of tax dollars, guys. The DART spacecraft will not destroy the asteroid, 
Instead, it will give it a little nudge yeah, a little push. and alter its trajectory around the bigger asteroid. This implies there's no way to change the asteroid's course to make it more dangerous. Dimorphos' speed will barely alter by around 1% when it circles Didymos due to the rapid impact. Although this may not seem like much, it will shift the Moon's orbital Over time. period by more than a minute. Every 11 hours and 55 minutes, Dimorphos completes an orbit around Didymos. According to the specialists observing from the John Hopkins Applied Physics Lab, if the hit is effective, it will shift the period by at least 73 seconds. Measuring the momentum transfer between the spacecraft and Dimorphos will reveal how much energy is required to alter an asteroid's trajectory. As a result, if an asteroid on a collision path with Earth is detected one day, NASA will now know how much momentum is required to make the asteroid avoid Earth. It doesn't take a scientist Super to know smart, that guys. is very important information indeed. Right. It is. Well, I just wish that we would have spent the money on one that actually had. You know what I'm saying here, guys? I don't like the waste of tax dollars. I'm not really a super fan of it, but um, you know, if we did get information that could potentially save the planet, then then great, guys. There are now no asteroids on a direct collision trajectory with Earth. There is a massive population of near-Earth asteroids in different forms and sizes. Finding these objects before they pose a direct threat to humans is critical to planetary protection. The concept behind them all is to alter the asteroid's orbital speed by a little amount. Changing the asteroid's orbital speed modifies the asteroid's orbit, so it won't be in the same spot oh, to strike Earth in guys, the future. Like, this imagery is absolutely crazy. If, if something like this was to come towards us, yeah, we'd have a problem. A big problem. Gigantic problem. Depending on where it's, obviously, you know, depending on where it's hitting, I uh, just hope that it doesn't really hit directly into the ocean uh, because in you know, tsunamis. Although this entire mission tsunamis. will take a long time to complete and be fully analyzed and studied, it's already progressing quite well. The DART spacecraft opened the round door covering its Draco telescopic camera on December the 7th, 2021, and provided the first photograph of its position. A dozen stars placed against a black sky can be seen in the photograph, which experts confirm is the junction of constellations Perseus, Aries and Taurus. There are so many asteroids floating through the deep reaches of space. There are truly millions out there and yeah. thousands that could someday More than millions. pose a threat to our no existence doubt. on Earth. In the end, what DART will attempt is the smartest, surest way to stop an asteroid from smashing smack dab into the middle of planet Earth. Yes, there are many things to be afraid of in deep space, but darts might be what stops the biggest threat of them all. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Um, like specifically, if we can like fund it in a way that um, makes sense to the American pop the public, or if we can kind of bring in some like NATO type scenario where everyone kind of dumps money into the pro into the project because everyone's going to be alive because of it, if that makes any sense to you guys. Uh, I think it's, I think definitely the DART uh, program would probably be very conducive to us being alive. All right, so let's fund it. <laughs> I'm down for it. Absolutely. All right. But all right, listen, guys, in the meantime, um, let me know what I should be checking out next. I'll jump into that as soon as I possibly can, and I'll catch you guys later.